You might think you don't like me. You think I'm on an ego trip. Well, I don't care because I'm famous. And that's more important than relationships. Fame's more important than relationships. Tom Wilson, he's kind of famous. He has lost all of his friends. Big whoop. Tonight is going to be the best. A showbiz party, a big success. Just lower your standards. Start expecting less. Let those lowered expectations set them up here. Start with me. me. Danielle and the Danielettes, her dance team, back here. Good evening, hello everybody. Thanks for being here. What fun we're having, am I right? What fun, what fun. And for those of you just taping me on your phone and not actually being here in person, just later on when you look at this, hello to you too. I don't actually exist. I'm only enjoying experiences two weeks from now when I watch this on my screen. My screen and I have a relationship. No one speak to me. Good to see everyone. Uh, I, I was, uh, you know, I'm an actor. I've been in a lot of things, a lot of things, and I continue to work. You know why? Because old dudes get jobs in commercials. <laughs> And that's my idea. You keep working by doing old guy in commercials. I'm going to be the old guy who hurts his back. That's it. Is he on every commercial you see? Yes. There's a big, big demand in Hollywood for old guy who hurts his back. I'm going to, I'm going to there's a lot of work. And the scooter came at no cost to me. <laughs> Old scooter dude. <laughs> he doesn't even have to pay for the scooter. It came at no cost to him. <laughs> How many medicines are doing commercials now? Whatever, you know? behind me, horseback, cool air, rustling leaves, and we can deliver those catheters right to your door. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be doing. So, so if you don't see me as, you know, like a recurring guy on whatever, some TV show, <laughs> A lot of TV shows, I don't even remember the name of the show, okay? But that's okay. That's okay, because we had fun doing it. Now, before I do this stuff, oh, you know, we just goof off. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, terribly experienced with doing this kind of Q&A thing. So I thought I asked Aaron, and give him Aaron a round of applause. I'm working very hard all day for everybody here. Thank you. Oh, I'm not done. No, go sit down. No, not, not, no. I'm giving you applause and you sit there. Like in Las Vegas, you sit up, you say thank you very much, and you sit back down with Frank Sinatra or whoever you're with or whatever. I'll call you up in a second, but I was going to tell a couple of stories because there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, questions in the Q and A period. You guys will certainly get to ask questions if you like, but I'll just tell you a couple of stories of the of the questions that usually come up. You know what I mean? So it, it's Back to the Future stuff, of course. Of course. Oddly enough, everyone has a Back to the Future question, and no one asks me anything about Ninja Turf, the Kung Fu movie I got killed in in 1981. <laughs> but I'll recreate my whole role in Ninja Turf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> I was great in that. And oh, but before we get to Back to the Future, you know, I have to tell you, now I've told some people, some people know this, but I'm way more famous and important to American culture than you even think. 
Do you know why? why? I'm. <laughs> I'll tell you. I was the actor who introduced biscuits at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yes, national commercial. Yeah, before me, there were no biscuits. Can you imagine life like that? No. Oh, you young people, I had biscuits whenever I want. They didn't exist. They didn't exist until I introduced them. I'll act it out for you. Yeah. No, free. This comes with the purchase price. Oh, along with Danielle's footage. I was a young construction worker on the job. Don't laugh, sir. <laughs> yes, I had a lunch of a chicken breast and a cool, refreshing drink. But something was missing. Fresh bottom up biscuits made from scratch. Blink. I had a biscuit in my hand. A biscuit magically appeared in my hand, and I introduced this country, this nation, nay, the world, <laughs> to biscuits with your fast food meal. You're welcome. <laughs> so, so, I had done that kind of stuff, you know, I had been the biscuit guy, Kentucky Fried Chicken, I got a job, it was the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles, and I got a job because I kind of looked like this guy, Pete Merringer, who won the gold medal in the 1932 Olympics. So they made this grainy, scratchy, fake black and white footage, like it was 1932 when I was wrestling people and everything. And they say, do you know how to wrestle? And when you're a young actor, what do you say, sir? Yes. Of course I do. Wrestle? Call my little bear, I don't care. <laughs> Will it be on TV? All right. <laughs> so I did that kind of thing. I was on the facts of life. Yep. Uh huh. That's right. Big time. Blair and Joe wanted to take the college money and spend it on scholarships for underprivileged kids. I was Moose, captain of the football team. I wanted to use it for a new scoreboard. <laughs> that struggle on the facts of life. <laughs> you take the good, you take the bad, you take a vote, but then you have the facts of life. <laughs> I did a bunch of that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? I was on Knight Rider. Here's my role from Knight Rider. So 
I'm not gonna get that. So I was, actually, I really thought, if I do a great job, maybe I could be cast as one of this guy's gang members. You know, that's really what my thinking. So I went into this audition, and I go, I meet the lady who's, who's casting it, and she said, makes me real comfortable. She sits down and says, well, I talked to your agent, you're supposed to be God's gift to acting or something, so, you know, I see what you got in here. So you put them on the spot. They were special, uh, they were, they were spe they called them size. They were special audition material because they didn't want to give away the entire script and everything, the secrets of the script, so they had written specific things. But it was me pushing George McFly around and everything. And I did the CA and fly, all that stuff. Um, and I apparently I did well. She says, hmm, me and Mike in here. You know, get, went out, get the other cast director in there. Why don't you do it again? I did it again. They brought me back again and again and again. And to this day, 2017, I've never done more uh, callbacks, they call it, when you get called back to audition again when the, the herd is thinning. You know, 500 guys, 300 guys, 100 guys, you know that thing. I've never gone back for more auditions to anything than I did for that. I went back several, several times. Uh, so they, I went, I don't know, six or seven times. They had to come in early in the morning once to make me up as an older person um, in order to see how I might act as an older person and do different scenes and that kind of stuff. And we were paired up very early on when, when it's a team thing, me and McFly. You know, and they'll say, they'll bring a bunch of George McFly's in, a bunch of Biff guys in, and they'll say, well, you read with him, and then mix and match, and see how he does it with him, and Bob do it with Ted, and all that. Well, Crispin Glover and I were paired up first. They say, you do it with him. And, and, uh, and we went in, and for the rest of the audition process, we were together. It was Tom and Crispin, Tom and Crispin. Tom and Crispin, Tom and Crispin, the whole way. So you're thinking, I don't know, what's, what's that about? Anyway, the last audition. The last audition, they say, we, they want to see you with like the heads of the studio, and Steven Spielberg will be there, and Robert Zemeckis, and everybody. And it's a little, this, this, this room at Amblin Entertainment, uh, Steven Spielberg company, big, big meeting table. And I go in, and it's Crispin and I. And we do the scene, McFly with this, you know, hello, anybody home, all that stuff. So Bob Zemeckis, the director, takes me aside and says, Tom, we really kind of want to see physically how you would do, like really kind of push him around, you know what I mean? I mean, bring it up a little bit and do, you know, do your thing, like a little bit more strip, a little bit, so, okay. So as a young actor, and even an older actor, sometimes you go for it, you know what I mean? Well, <laughs> I've come this far. Right? I didn't drive from Philadelphia to Hollywood to just go halfway, you know what I mean? I drove out there to do it. So, I beat Crispin up since, I mean, I just throw, throw, I'm throwing him around the room, pushing him up against the table, we fly, all that stuff. Anyway, at one point in the scene, I, kind of, I take him by two lapels and I lift him into the air. And I'm pushing him up like I'm gonna fly. You do. And, but there is, I've done so much physical stuff, and I have him in the air that you know you second guess yourself immediately. Then your brain goes like, "What on earth are you doing? <laughs> are you out of your mind?" And at that instant, I completely forgot everything in the scene. You know? I forgot the lines. I forgot everything, and he's like in the air, and I'm thinking, I, I, uh, and I put him down to the ground, and did the whole uncomfortable, just, well, uh, I'm, <laughs> ta-da, that was it, that was it, I was done, you know, the, the ultimate, and see, you know, uh, and then they say, um, well, thanks a lot, Tom, thanks a lot, we, we appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Uh, Crispin, could you stay here? Uh, I'm gonna go jump off a bridge. I had Bruce Springsteen tickets that night. 
The, you know, I was already late for the concert. This in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, the whole entire sports arena all of a sudden, dancing in the dark. Bah, 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 bah. I'm in section Q. <laughs> I almost had a career. The next morning, my agent calls me and says, You got Biff. You were Biff. In fact, you know. So, uh, so uh, it, it, was, it was an amazing experience. Um, it, it, to, to do so many different characters in movie, I kind of, I don't know if there has been another movie where someone's played all kinds of different family members at different ages and everything. So it comes up a lot, like how did I approach that? And we'll do Q and A's right after this, Aaron. We'll, you know, we'll get some of your questions if you have any. But uh, okay, which was the most fun to do? That comes up a lot, right? He just went, yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. <laughs> uh, I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I, yes, I've, dri I've ridden subways in my life and trains. I've ridden bikes. I didn't ride a horse. <laughs> my favorite was Back to the Future 3, the third one. Because first of all, first of all, even at the time that we made it, the late, the late uh, what, 80s, the early 90s, uh, they were just not doing a Western of that size and scope anymore. They didn't make that gigantic John Wayne-like western with 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 trucks doing you know going along with the camera as all these horses around. That kind of shit. That's very expensive to make. I mean, they just don't make that kind of movie. So for the first time in a long time, a big Hollywood movie was making a western, a big western. So I got the opportunity. It was unbelievable. I learned horseback riding from a man named Corky Randall, who worked on all of John Wayne's movies, who taught the director John Ford how to ride, who worked on all those movies, and he taught, I went out to his ranch in California and learned to ride from one of the legendary, legendary Hollywood cowboys, you know? I learned how to quick draw a gun. They said, you have to learn that. So all during Back to the Future 2, in the rehearsals, at lunch and everything, I'm in futuristic outfits, wearing a holster and a western gun because I was practicing all the time, spinning the gun, shooting, bang, bang, doing all that stuff because I learned for this man, Argo Ojala. They said, we got this guy, he's Holly, he's taught everybody. He taught Kevin Costner and Silverado, but all the way back through gun smoke and all the westerns, how to shoot the gun. Argo was the guy in the, in the opening credits of the show Gunsmoke. Do you remember that TV show? The girl, Gunsmoke. Arvo is the little guy that walks out into the road and Marshall Matt Dillon shoots him dead. You know, so he was in the show, like, oh, like that. You get paid for that. <laughs> he was on Gunsmoke. It ran for like 25 years. And every week he got paid just for going, oh. <laughs> but Arvo, at the time that I met him, he was probably 80 years old. He was the slowest, fastest man I've ever seen. <laughs> The fastest gun in the West was the slowest person you could ever imagine. He was 80, walked like this. How you doing there, Tom? Oh, here's... And then he'd have the gun holster on and everything. He was, now, when you always remember, you gotta hit it with your thumb. Because... <laughs> Yo, do you wanna try it? Arvo could shoot a gun that's a single action revolver, which is that now they have double action where you just pull it out and go bang with the trigger. But then, old western gun is click, click, bang, click, click, bang, like that. So he would shoot it three times. He would draw it, hit the, hit the hammer there with his thumb, bang, hit it with this thumb, click, click, bang, hit it with his pinky, click, click, bang. So he could go, and put it back in, and he shot it three times. 
Yes. And then he'd go back to his car. All right, bye. <laughs> but, but, but to be able to, to be around people like that was absolutely amazing. That's been the thrill to me. Is it's, it's when you're a young man and you get to be there when they're crashing a car or when they're blowing up a truck. That's a lot of fun, you know, when you're a kid. Look at that thing blow up, cool. But the really cool thing are the, are the moments, like in the first Back to the Future, a much older man was doing my special makeup, the prosthetic makeup, to make me look older. And he was quite an old man at the time. And he was, he was doing the glue on my face. And I was just curious, you know, why still be in show business? Well, why, you know, why is he still working? Oh, you know, Tom, he didn't make up all the Wizard of Oz. Uh, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? You get to work with just people in history, you know? Just historic people. And to do a Western like that and be part of movie history is just amazing. And in the third Back to the Future, Harry Carey Jr., Pat Buttram is in there, Doug Taylor, just historic uh, cowboys from the movie. So that, that meant a lot to me. Uh, to be a part of that. Did that make sense? Are we, are we good? If you guys, yes, it was fun. It was great, it was great fun. But now, I, you know, I, I can talk blue streak. So I just want to make sure that you guys, because I'll just be blah, blah, blah. And then there was this funny story. And, and then we're out of time, and he was like, hey man, I wanted to ask about the thing. I had a question about that biscuit thing. <laughs> so why, why don't we bring Aaron back up? Can we get yeah, to bring Aaron back up? Thank you. So Aaron can, you know, he's a traffic cop because I don't know how to do this. Uh, well, there's Mike's right there and there. So line up, you guys got a question. But I actually do have a question about the biscuit thing. All right. <laughs> biscuit question. When, when you're a young actor, I mean, that's that's awesome. You got a you got a job. You're the guy that introduced the biscuit. Well, when you're being broadcast all across the nation in the Biscuit commercial, did anybody recognize you? Did you ever get sp uh, spot or sightings as the Biscuit guy? Like, hey, you're the Biscuit guy. When I was the Biscuit guy, I was probably, I don't know, 22, 23 years old. So if I could use Biscuit guy to, like, meet nice ladies or something, <laughs> you know, if you're going to, hey, any ladies now? Biscuit guy? Uh, in, but no, in, in, in true answer to your question, nobody recognized me as the biscuit guy, and they still don't. <laughs> Such a shame. So is that commercial out on YouTube? Like, can it you find it on YouTube? Find, you can actually find it. It's there somewhere. The numbers are going to just spike today. Yeah, they're going to gonna... Biscuit boink. Biscuit boink. It's, you know, it's biscuit boink. 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 Oh, boink. Sorry, yeah, okay. Uh, well, let's turn to the question over there. Hi, how are you? It's on, we can hear you. Thank you, my friend. Thanks. I, I just, if I can just add some, you know, I came out, honestly, because so, because people were, I just work, you know, I'm like a working actor. Just, just working and stuff, and because I, you know, because I didn't do the things with the cast or whatever, people are like, oh, the mysterious bitter man who doesn't do stuff. Dude, I'm working, you know? Like, I'm, I'm trying to buy groceries and stuff, you know? So people, I mean, I was getting emails from people like, why do you hate us? Like, I don't hate you. I don't hate anybody. I'm just trying, but, but it's good. But everyone uh, has been uh, terrific, and, and I appreciate your kindness, sir. Yeah, now what is your question? What's that again? Uh, Rick and Morty is is a kind of a play on Doc and Marty, mm -hmm. right? And I, I I've seen the show and think it's great and fun and creative. Uh, I haven't been invited to be on the show, so I I just haven't done the show. But basically, if you've got like free donuts, I'm there. <laughs> you know, Tom, you want to do Rick and Morty donuts? Bing, I'll be there. Uh, but it's fun. The great, it's really been funny. 
that um, maybe you guys, there's a band called Reliant K. They had a song called Hello McFly on one of their early albums. So my kids are huge Reliant K fans. They love the posters are up with that brooms and everything. And so I know who they are. Out of the blue, I get an email. Hello, Tom, we're this band Reliant K. And uh, we're big fans of yours. I emailed, jeez, I know who you guys are. You know, we're, we've been invited to perform on The Tonight Show. Will you play the guitar with us on a song? I thought it was a joke, you, you're kidding. No, we're, we, I think it'd be cool. So I got to be a rock star for one day, you know, on The Tonight Show, playing with Reliant K. Because they did songs because they were fans. But that kind of stuff, you know, Rick and Morty, or all of the, the interesting tribute things have been have been really crazy, really crazy. So, so uh, yeah, I would do it, especially, you know, as I say, free donuts. <laughs> Did that make uh, make you look cool in the eyes of your kids? Like, were they like, oh, dad, like, I was, I, I've been really lucky in that respect, that when my daughters were tiny, I got a part on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> So, you know, I did a lot of cartoons and everything, but to them, being he's on Supreme the Teenage Witch. You know, and little girls, 12 year olds, oh my god! I'm really sad that I'm Supreme the Teenage Witch! <laughs> so, so that was a thrill. To have the kids be small and be on SpongeBob SquarePants was absolutely unbelievable. Because uh, Tom Kenny's on the show, uh, Bill Fagerback, he all the Roger Bumpus is here. So as as we would record SpongeBob's, and people's kids or some nephew would come and hey Tom, you, you do the butthead thing to my nephew Rick. You know, Rick, oh come here, Ricky. Hello, anybody home? Whatever. So they're having this big cast and crew party for SpongeBob, and I'm bringing my kids to this party, and I just bring the cast all together to say I have an announcement to make. I've done a bit for all of your kids, nephews, and everything. When my kids get there, you do Patrick and SpongeBob until I say it's all right to stop. <laughs> That's right. You know, you're not done yet, Squidward. Keep going. <laughs> so it's really, it's really been fun in that respect to have that those, those pop cultural intersections with the kids. They've had a lot of fun. That's cool. That's cool. Hi. First of all, it is just so awesome to be having you, Mr. Tom Wilson. Thank you. And my question for you is, and Back to the Future Part 2, did you ever get to meet Elijah Wood? Uh, Elijah Wood was in the scene with me, but I didn't know him as Elijah Wood then. I knew him as uh, some kitty grapes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I I didn't, I didn't, you know, I mean, he, he was a little boy. Yeah. So I met Elijah. Okay. And I said, hello, Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said something like, hey, how's it going? And then I went, fuck, good. <laughs> but I didn't know he became Elijah Wood. <laughs> it was clearly a moment in time. <laughs> it was a moment the in time. Yeah, the first movie. The first movie. Speaking of me and Elijah Wood, it's magical. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hey, just awesome to have you here. Hmm? Thank you very much, sir. I Thank appreciate you. that. And man, I can see your backpack from far. <laughs> Howdy. Now we can not working. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, hey, all right, there we go. As we are in the great city of Orlando, um, how is it like working on the Back to the Future ride? A ride that I really miss and I'm pretty bummed out that it actually took out. But how? Uh, you know, and the, the interesting thing is, it was so ahead of its time, technologically, that in a sense, the Back to the Future ride still exists. <laughs> but with different, you know, different car shapes and a different film. You know what I mean? But, that, but that's how ahead of its time it was, that I, um, I didn't understand what they were doing. Um, Douglas Trumbull is the special effects wizard who was behind uh, the, the special effects for the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick's movie. So he was, he was in charge of the special effects of creating the Back to the Future ride. 
And it was really, a, it was a fascinating process for me. I'm just kind of, I'm not a big producer or whatever, but I'm, I'm interested in production, I'm interested in the technology, I was interested in the, the, the focal length of the, of the lens that they had for the camera, for that, for the dome. I know it's boring, you guys, but let me tell you something. When you project a big piece of film onto a dome, think about it. All the lines will be bent, right? If it goes into a dome, the sides of buildings will be bent, street lights will be bent. So if you're making a model of Hill Valley that the camera must go through, all of the lines have to be bent so that when they're projected onto a curve, they appear as straight. So the fascinating thing, they built an entire model of going through Hill Valley that looked like it was a psychedelic weird trip there. <laughs> because everything was curved. But it was in order that they show it into the dome and you think it's real and you're going through Hill Valley and everything. And that was only a tiny bit of the technological things that they were doing on that. So it was really interesting for me to do that. And you know, like Chris Lloyd was a part of it. Chris and I are close. Chris is wonderful, so it was great to see him. And it was a lot of fun. But uh, I, uh, they, you know, they had to come up. I was on the ride very early. In fact, they were, they were cutting together the film that would be the ride film. So literally, like any movie, they would show the dailies, you know, the things we shot yesterday. And they would have black and white footage, right? So they would show the footage, get in the car, program the car, and see what it would feel like. So I got in the car. They showed me some of the black and white footage with some of the rough estimates of the car. I got so sick. <laughs> 30 seconds. I mean, it was really aggressive. I was like, that's, that's okay. That's all right. Thank you. I get it. I get what it's going to do. Because when they first opened the ride, people were getting said they had to calm the ride down. They had to make it smoother and just a little bit less because they made it like, whoa. And people weren't liking that. But I'll tell you, I, I went to, and this is, this is, one of those crazy Hollywood things. They had they had a big party for kids uh, of one of the one of the charities for sick kids to come and go to Universal Studios. And I came back. I came there to meet the kids. You know, take pictures with them and everything. But the ride was open, so they said, "Tom, will you go on the ride with some of the kids?" And I'm not the best roller coastery guy, you know. So okay, great. Great, and it's sick kids, you know? So I go on the ride, the whole thing. Da, 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 da. Oh, that was fun, Mr. Wilson. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Teddy, nice to meet you, too. I swear, I get up, I come right off the ride, and go, Tom, Teddy and Jim didn't get to go on the first time. <laughs> She feels the same way. 
But it's true, when you think about it, the, the you know, and I know, it, it really is that, you know, it was harder when we were young, but, but the, the computer graphics and the, the advent of, of using computers in everything, in producting stunts, in someone falling from a building, and all of those things, it has revolutionized movie making in ways that no one really can imagine. Because only a few years ago, a guy had to jump off the building. You know what I mean? I mean, you had to build a model of the whole town and put a camera through it because you couldn't just like three-dimensional visualize scene and go. That didn't, you know, it didn't exist. So a lot of that work, uh, I think, should come into uh, more and even more respectful scrutiny of, of really excellent work of these teams of artists, too, you know, all those rows of names that you see going by at the end of the movie. Those are all people working really hard. Hi, Tom. You did some pretty um, interesting scenes with uh, not so smelly stuff in Back to the Future. Yes. Do you still hate manure? <laughs> <laughs> you have to do that scene. Are you manure? Here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I really I hate manure. Uh, first of all, I hate manure. <laughs>
actual guitar. I'm just way bigger than you look. <laughs> I'm flying in a plane or I'm on the street. There's a lot of friendly people that I like to meet. They shake my hand but never ask my name. And they start asking questions that are always the same. Hey, what's Michael J. Fox like? He's nice. What's Christopher Lloyd like? Kind of quiet. What's Crispin Glover like? Unusual. Stop asking me the question. Went to the bar mitzvah of my nephew Josh. I'm not Jewish, but I like to nosh. Put on my yarmulke, started to pray. When the rabbi leaned over and I heard him say, Hey, was that real manure? No, it wasn't. How was that DeLorean? A piece of garbage. Do those hoverboards really fly? It's a movie. Stop asking me the question. Can we take your picture? Come on, look mean. Would you call my friend a butthead on his answering machine? No. Questions, questions fill my head. I went to my doctor. My doctor said, what does a key grit do? Set up lights. What does the best boy do? Help the key grit. What does a producer do? I don't know. Stop asking me the question. Do you all hang out together? No, we don't. How's Crispin Glover? I never talked to him. Back to the future for not happening. Stop asking me the question. Hey, who's the nicest famous guy you know? Matt Damon. Who is the biggest jerk? Gary Busey. How much money do you make more than you do? Stop 